I can also leave tall buildings in a single room. <laughs> this uh, book that I'm going to read from, this little excerpt tonight, is from a memoir that I'm just uh, working on for the time being. I have another one over there that I finished, and this one hasn't come out yet, so you're getting a, a first hearing of what this is going to be. It's called The Art Student Living with Wildebeest. <laughs> and it's a, I'm going to read a little preamble for the actual excerpt I'm going to read just to sort of set you up for it, so you know where in heaven's name this thing is going. Well, maybe not, it just may confuse you all the more. The wildebeest is a hoofed animal, gray, with darker vertical stripes that look almost black from a distance. It has a dark mane and a long tail. The body looks disproportionate, as the front end is heavily built, the hindquarters are slender and the legs spindly. Both males and females have curving horns that are close together at the base, but curve outward, inward, and slightly backward. Though wildebeest have no camouflage coloring to hide from predators, they get some protection from gathering in large herds. They are the favorite prey of lions and hyenas. Introduction. What follows, aided by journals, letters, newspaper accounts, and embarrassment etched memories, is either one, a true account of my first grab for success, or two, Recollections of fever dream flashbacks I've been having since smoking what I thought was pot over a weekend in July 1967. <laughs> the odds are about even that we have never met. If you are expecting anything other than a memoir of angst-ridden art students, youthful folly, soul-searing failures, soaring triumphs, and wildebeest in the cafeteria, you had best return this volume to the shelf. This is a story of four years of my life as revisited decades later when we pretend that accumulated wisdom now drives our daily desires and accomplishments. First morning. Now, with a breeze off the lake, the twin bronze lions flanking the front steps of the Chicago Art Institute waited for me on that early fall morning. I paused at the foot of that flight of steps, sweeping up to the multiple double doors. The art museum's huge, block-long facade spread away on both sides out of peripheral vision. American and Chicago flags snapped and rippled in the breeze, jutting out on their angled st staffs that pierced the 19th century ornamentation. Flap, flap, flap. Step, 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 students and faculty mounted the marble staircase between, beneath the flags and between the dual indifference of those lions. Most faculty entered the rear of the building through the Goodman Theater entrance because it was nearer to where they parked their cars. Those who made the grand entrance nodded and acknowledged the greetings of their students who scattered on the staircase in singles and knots dragging on one last cigarette before committing themselves to dark beyond the bronze doors. Lost in this funnel churning up the facade were the tourists who came from Toledo and Fargo and Cincinnati just to see the paintings and galleries of naked sculpture. A mom clutched her guidebook, praying that some speck of culture would rub off on a pair of rugrats that trooped with sullen storm cloud faces and each with a small mitt gripped by the dad, wearing his best fedora hat and double-breasted martyr's cloak. He advanced as he had up Korea's pork chop hill, waiting, waiting, waiting for the next commie machine gun burst, resigned, determined, resolute that his kids would never fall as low as the beatnik rabble who now littered the sacred forecourt of this temple of art. The art students either bolted up the steps to their advertising, design, or art history classes, or circled into bunches like bison, their backs to the wind, some moaning about drawing and painting schedules, and others gesturing extravagantly, or laughing too loud, letting the yet-to-be-initiated know that they were the horny-handed old vets who knew all the temple secrets, the high priests and priestesses of beat. 
They reeked of turpentine, acetic acid, thalo green oil paint, crushed charcoal and sawdust. Their fingernails were rimmed with cray paws and scratchboard blacking. And their hands and forearms bore healing burns from acetylene torches. Clothes were randomly hung to covered body parts thrown on after cold water splash with a paint rag for a towel. <clears throat> they posed as creative detritus and dared the uptight proles to point and sneer. They held the keys to what makes life worthwhile, the creation of art. The slow, inhaled, well-rolled joint, lolling cheap whiskey on the tongue and choking up, yeah, beneath watering eyes as the shot in flame an already brutalized esophagus. I stood with them, yet so far away on the planet square, a stamped out product of the Protestant work ethic. They saw through me, the Saturday afternooner, the wildebeest separated from the herd, helpless. They scanned me with late night coffee shop eyes, with fragments of derivative poetry still lodged among the crevasses of their waxy ears, alongside riffs of bongo, beep bop bop and the metallic hiss of tambourines that filled in the breaks between jazz sets whose high shrieks gurgled down improv on improv that stirred the smoky air and stained the tin ceilings of old shop fronts. I stood with them in my pressed and creased chinos, my plaid short sleeve shirt tucked in, leather quarter boots, spit shined and new heels, I walked up the last few steps to the double bronze doors, my hooves clopping on marble alongside horny-handed artist bets and double bets in their late twenties with G.I. Bill money fueling their future, recently owned by Uncle Sam. Cigarettes were crushed into big urns of sand that flanked the doors. Conversations died, a hiss, a revolution of glass, and one by one we were fired into the hushed lobby with low amber lighting. We all herded obediently toward the raked arena of Fullerton Hall. Lions, cheetahs, elegant giraffes, pot bellied pigs, yaki hyenas, and the wildebeest, touching shoulders as we entered our ark. 